Hey guys, my name is Tensor. Today we're going to be doing something that I've never really done on this channel before, and that is to go back to an old project, revisit it, and update it. The project in question is the old Rust port sniffer that I wrote about three or four years ago. The other day I was going across GitHub and I was looking at some things, and I noticed that there were quite a few repositories that had copied this code. And it kind of bothered me because this code is just not optimal. If you go ahead and you run this, even with the max amount of threads, it will take tens of minutes to resolve. And we can do better. And while we're making this application faster, let's go ahead and also clean up the command line by importing a command line library. So that's what we're going to be doing today. One more thing before we get started, I'm just going to point out that the old video, of course, is still valuable. It's still valuable to go back and look at it, and I will make sure to link it over to this video as well. I will be keeping the old code in the repository for prosperity's sake. We'll have a version 1 and a version 2, with version 1 being this old code, and version 2 being the new code that we end up writing today. First thing we want to do is go into our cargo.toml. For one, let's update the version just because. We also want to update the Rust edition. So because this was a project that was written a long time ago, it was using the old version of Rust. Setting the edition to 2021 will allow us to use libraries and dependencies that obviously also use this edition. It will also give us new features that we would not have access to without it. We're going to pull in two dependencies, Tokyo and BPEF. Tokyo is an asynchronous runtime, and this will allow us to use green threads instead of OS threads. Now, green threads are basically threads that are scheduled by the Tokyo runtime itself, whereas OS threads are the hardware threads that you get with a CPU. So for example, my CPU is a Threadripper with 128 threads, so I would have 128 OS threads available to me. Green threads are lighter weight, and because they're scheduled by the Tokyo runtime itself, we can have many, many more of them than we can have OS threads. The main trade-off here, though, is that we have to embed a runtime into our program, that is, in this case, the Tokyo runtime, whereas if we were just using native Rust and OS threads, then we wouldn't actually have a runtime except for, of course, the runtime that we create with our program. Now, BPATH, on the other hand, is a command line tool. And we're going to be using the derive feature and then the bright color feature. These features will let us quickly write a CLI. Derive will allow us to basically create a struct, and then we can use the macros that are imported with derive to essentially flesh out the struct and turn it into our CLI. And then bright color will just allow us to have colors in the command line. All right, so the first thing I'm going to come and do is just clean up the CLI. And we're going to get rid of the threads argument, the flag, and then we're also going to just get rid of this entire implementation block. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make it so that rather than having the user specify the amount of threads that they want to use and the address, we'll have it so that the user specifies the address they want to sniff on. And we'll also allow the user to specify a start port and an end port so that they can specify a specific range of ports. And then because we're not specifying threads, we'll make it so that the system will use exactly one Tokyo task to attempt to connect to a specific port rather than what we're doing right here, where we can have a thread try to connect to multiple different ports. And of course, I'll explain this a bit more as we get into it. All right, so first I'm going to go ahead and just clean up our imports here. So we're going to be using these things still, but we're also going to be pulling in the TCP stream from Tokyo, the Tokyo task structure, and then the BPAP, BPAP macro. This will allow us to create our command line. Another thing we want to go ahead and do is just create a fallback address. So because the user can specify an address and that address could potentially fail, we want to have a fallback that the sniffer will go ahead and fall back to. First, we want to specify a fallback. Now the fallback here will just be our local host, which is 127.0.0.1. If the user doesn't specify the address argument in our CLI, it will go ahead and just fall back to this value. We'll go ahead and derive BPATH on our argument struct. This will basically specify to the BPAF macro that we want the argument struct to be our CLI parser. 
In other words, when a user passes in an address, it will be in the IP address format. And if they pass in something that isn't in that format, it will throw an error. Now, when we run this CLI, we also want to have an options screen. So we'll go ahead and we'll add this little annotation here. So BPATH options. Now we can use the BPATH annotation on top of the address field to specify how we want this field to act in the command line. So for instance, we want to have long and short versions of the command. These will just default to, these will give us a long form version of the address argument, which will just of course be the name address, and then a short form, which will just be the first letter of the value, which will just be A. And then we can also add our fallback. In this case, we'll point it towards the constant that we created up here. So IP fallback. If we want to add a description to the help, we can go ahead and add a comment here with three forward slashes like this. And this just defines what this field is. So the address that you want to sniff must be a valid IPv4 address, and then states it falls back to our fallback. Now we can create another field here. We'll call this start port. And the start port will be the first port that we want the sniffer to start on. Let's have this fall back to one, because obviously you can't have ports that are negative or zero. That also means that we also want to have a guard so that the user can't put in a negative port or some kind of invalid port in general. BPATH allows us to create these guards by creating a function that takes in a reference to the type that we're trying to add this on, in this case U16, and outputs a boolean. Start port guard will just be, is the value greater than zero and we can attach it here by writing guard like this and then putting in the function name and then we can add a little description here and we can just say must be greater than zero now let's go ahead and add an end port argument and as you can see it just kind of followed what we did with start here so we have our long and short and then we also have a guard here where we're making sure that this is less than or equal to our max value. And of course we have the fallback of the max constant value. And that's because you can't really have a port greater than this number. So of course we don't want a user to enter in like 1 million for instance. And as a result, this will allow us to just catch those kinds of errors and then output this little display if the user inputs the error. And actually both of these fields have a description. So the start port is just the start port for the sniffer. And then it says must be greater than zero. And then the end port is the end port for the sniffer. And then it says must be less than or equal to 65535. Now let's go ahead and clean up our scan function. We imported TCP stream from Tokyo and TCP stream from Tokyo automatically is asynchronous, meaning it uses a future. So we wanna turn this function into an async function. That way we can go ahead and call await on the TCP stream connect call. So by calling await, we're basically saying, wait for this call to finish before you move on to any other line of code. And what that does is it also unwraps the future. So now the errors that we were seeing before on the match statement here go away. We're also going to just in general clean up this function by getting rid of the loop and getting rid of this logic here. Before what would happen is we have the iteration that happens in the main function down here where it iterates from zero to the number of threads and then that would specify where the thread would start going through the ports in the address. So we'd put in say like 10 and then there'd be another one that would have 11. So 10 would start at 10 and then it would iterate upwards, and then we'd have 11, which would start at 11 and then iterate upwards. The problem with this though, is that we're starting at say 10, iterating upwards, which means that we're going to cover 10, 11, 12, 13, etc. And then we're also starting at 11, iterating upwards, and then we're covering 11, 12, 13, 14. So we're covering multiple ports at the same time through multiple threads, and that's just inefficient. Let's just get rid of all this. So we're gonna get rid of the start port here, the loop, and we're gonna get rid of this if break statement and then the iteration. Let's also get rid of the number of threads argument because we're not gonna need that anymore. Uh, instead of just putting in a tuple with the address in the port, we're gonna use format. We're just gonna use a string instead. And we'll change the argument up here from start port to just port because each scan will scan exactly one port and then end and exit. 
So here's what our new function looks like. What we're doing is we're connecting to the address. And of course the address is just a string where we have the address part and then the colon and then the port that we want to listen to. Then if we connect to a port, we'll print out a period as we did before. Then we'll flush the IO stream so that we can then print out another period next to it and so on and so forth. And we'll send the port back through the channel to the main function so that we can then print out that we have an open port. If it doesn't connect properly, we do nothing because we don't really care about the ones that are unsuccessful. Now down in main, we have all of these errors. Uh, first of all, we can get rid of all of this. We can get rid of most of this logic as well. So any of the arguments logic, we could just get rid of. Um, we also want to take main, make it async, and we want to annotate it with Tokyo main like this. And this will tell the system that this is the main entry point for the Tokyo system. The macro that we implemented on the argument struct creates a function of the same name. In this case, it's just called arguments. And so what we can do is just called arguments.run. This will collect all of the command line values from the parser and then put them into the struct and give us the struct. We have the value ops, which is of type arguments, and this will collect all of the user inputs. Now we can go ahead and modify the for loop here. So instead of iterating from zero to the amount of threads that we wanted to use, we can iterate from the start port to the end port. Then let's get rid of this uh, thread spawn call because we're not spawning threads anymore. Instead, we're going to be using tasks. So tasks are essentially green threads in the Tokyo system. So we can just say task spawn. And this is going to want an asynchronous block. So instead of passing in a closure, we'll pass in our async block and then we'll put our scan call in here. We also want to call a wait. And then we also want to, of course, call a wait because we want this to block inside of the thread and to resolve. Then naturally we want to make sure that our scan is working properly. So we'll get rid of the number threads argument and then we'll get address from our ops value. Looking over the rest of the logic, it can stay the same and we are done with our program. So now this is a much more efficient version of the port sniffer than the one that I wrote five years ago, apparently, uh, based on this little message here. All right, so let's go ahead and go into our command line and see what our CLI looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and just call cargo run with double dashes and dash H so that we can see the help that was generated from the macro that we're using. So you can see here we have the available options. We have a little usage thing. And because we implemented the bright colors feature for BPAP, it allows us to have this green as well, which is kind of nice. It tells us all the arguments um, and then it shows all the values that we put into the comments. So now when I go in to invoke this call, I can go ahead and specify the address and I can just use dash A instead of dash dash address. And if I want to, I can specify a start and an end. So let's see how fast this runs. If I just call it on 192.168.11. Here's the result of running the port sniffer, and it took us roughly two, three minutes to resolve and get all of these open ports. We can also go ahead and just call cargo run, and this will use our default values, which will be 127.0.0.1, and then a start port of one and the end port of the maximum port value. And you can see this went through and it got all of the open ports. Importantly, it also only took about three or four minutes at most. So there's one more thing I just want to let you guys know. While port sniffing itself is not inherently malicious, it can be misconstrued as such. If you use this code on some kind of public domain, the owners of said domain may flag you or blacklist you or think that you're trying to DDoS them. I would highly recommend that you just use this code on things that you own. So your own servers or your router or your public computers and stuff like that. All right, guys, so that's it for this tutorial. Feel free to comment in the box below. Let me know what you think of the new format, if you like it, if you hate it, what I should improve upon, any of this stuff. It's been a while since I've made any videos in general, and I'm hoping that at least doing something like this will allow me to create some simple, basic videos. In the future, I am really going to try to put aside some time so that I can make videos on the regular, but I'm hoping that in the interim, we can do a few of these videos just to kind of get the ball rolling. All right, guys, well, have a good night.